This is Family Worship Experience International, a place of worship, word, and intimacy. Join us as we take a walk into the life-changing Word of God with Apostle Jonathan Shokonya. Come on, can you pray in the spirit if you can? Can you pray in the spirit if you can? Shekata Berena Brokos Kobedeke. Shekata Nadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
this is not just about your spirituality but even your finances again I'm seeing someone fire is coming on one of your hands you won't be able to hold it it's shaking profusely again call that name again two more times again now call that name for the last time Step into that season. Step into that grace. Step into that fire. The longing of your heart is being satisfied tonight. You came to be revived. You came to be stirred up. Let a thousand cubits be measured to you tonight. Shateka bronde kataya. Rabakate skombre katila. Erabate kos kebrende kata. Shaketa katabaradabaya Yeko saban de kradekesh Zetelomans kabaradabaya I'm lost without you I'm desperate for you Without you, yeah. and I, and I, yeah. I'm lost without you, yeah. and I. Seated quietly. Let's help me change the key and reduce the strings. Zota prende kabaladaskia. Vora de ke shate blendo skibata. Le kora de freski to shada. Emando skibrande ka. Lendo ziki brada kaya. Where you are seated, can you pray in tongues for one minute? Reduce the strings. Pray in tongues for one minute where you are seated. Create your atmosphere. Zelo Cobra de Kesha. Branda dos ki bra livre di ki shataya. your glory fill this house let your glory fill our hearts
to the Lord two more times. Be sit and just be calm. Lord, your glory, your presence in this house will forever be revered, forever be honored. We thank you. We love you. We declare that you are the one behind all the things that happens around here. We give you all the glory. series is supposed to be a revival moment for us. There is nothing in this world that can quench this hunger, Lord. Help him. He's an usher. If you're an usher, you have to be discerning. There is a cry in my heart because the fact that you're ushering does not mean you're not supposed to receive. And it's from the depth of my soul. Lift your hands. For the glory of the Lord. Lord. 
that can quench this hunger, Lord, just now, man. It is a cry for the glory of the Lord. For you are my diet and my necessary food. Now, man, your presence is all I want. And I can live without you. Please increase your keyboard, please. And you are my diet and my necessary food. Your presence is all I want. And I can live without you. Just help them. Oh. of you outside can you all be on your feet one moment you are outside be on your feet lift your hands lift your hands there are seven of you outside you are stepping into fresh season of fire and grace seven of you outside everyone that is hungry can partake beyond the seven people at the count of three father find these ones out alter their realities from now never be the same one two and now three take that fire take that grace help them take it now step into new seasons step into new graces and never be the same your hunger say yes god cannot say no it is done please be seated seated for this is holy ground hear me now this is holy ground my friend this is holy ground hear me now 
This is holy ground, my friend. So will you open your eyes and open your heart? Then you get to understand that the Lord is here, right here where you are. Open your eyes, open your ears, son you will understand that the Lord is in, that the Lord is in. If your presence will not go with us, he said, do not even carry us from here. We are helpless without him. Completely helpless. Completely. Our intelligence will fail us as powerful as that can be. Our prowess and all that we possess will fail us again and again. If you can help me increase the feedback a little, I appreciate his glory, his presence. Timeless classic. When you have access to his presence, believe me, you become a wonder. Wonder to your generation, wonder to your community, wonder to your environment. And that the presence of God is not just for ministry. Be a student be a businessman when you have his presence it bless them result it brings them result as to those in ministry the presence of God last week I told us that wherever the Holy Spirit is the terminology used for that is in the body of Christ is the presence of God is here he is the one that represents the son and the father either in an environment or an atmosphere is the one. So wherever he shows up, we can say the presence of God is here. The glory of God is here. Jacob found himself in such an environment where his grandfather, his father had erected an altar. The place had become a portal. And then the Bible says he slept there and he saw a ladder that stretched to the heavens. And angels ascending and descending. And on top of it was one that stood, I am. When he awoke from his vision, the Bible said, Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and is in this place and I knew not. Whenever you are able to recognize that his presence is in the place, it means the father, the son are represented. Men of old understood this and see the way they made up their mind never to move without him. If you want us to go from here and your glory is not going with us, forget about it. We are not going nowhere. Your presence. Your presence. The challenge with our generation is that we've tried to use a lot of things to replace. Try to use connections. Try to use whatever it is that we have. He has to be top on our list. Priority. Every other thing can be an auxiliary. Your intelligence, beautiful. Your connections, beautiful. All that you think you have should be secondary, not the primary. Because all of these things can fall. They can disappoint. Again and again, a lot of you have had people promise you things and they refuse to fulfill them. The presence of God is the only guarantee. And I told us last week that when you have access to his presence, the first thing he does with you is that he turns you to a wonder. Forget about your weakness. Just come as you are. And I can guarantee you won't live as you are. Something will happen. When you sit with him, he has the ability to turn a weakling to a wonder. That's what happened when we stay with him. That he can change 
a mere mortal, an ordinary person, for many of us, we know the weaknesses we brought into this kingdom. And then when we look back, you see the one that the Lord is making out of your life. He did that with men of old. He's still doing it till now. So that the presence of God can turn men into wonders. And I told us last week, he's the guarantee for the miraculous. When we come for service and we hear testimonies, when we come for miracle service and we hear testimonies, he is the force behind all the happenings. He is the force behind all the results. And I shared with us how that is also the guarantee for favor. If you want to live a life of favor, you want to carry favor, his presence. How will they know that we have found favor in your sight? If your presence don't go with us, how will they know? How will they know that we are different, distinction? How will they know? How will we be able to enter into our rest? That the presence of God can bring rest to an individual. You notice that our struggles, you see, prolonged struggle is a proof that something major is lacking in your life. When you realize that you've struggled for so long, prolonged affliction is a proof that his presence is lacking. Because somehow you can come with all of those challenges, but after a while, his presence will offset all of them. He's one of our great assets in this house. We love you now. We love you tomorrow. We will love you forever. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you tomorrow. We will love you forever. We love you. We love you now and not just for today. We will love you tomorrow. We love you forever. We love you. When you hear men talk about their love for God, I love him and nothing can. Re you just check and see what their lives have become. People don't just talk like that. Check most of our fathers of faith, I mean, especially. You see a, a man come and say, nothing can replace God in my heart. Nothing can take his place in my Check the story of that man. See what his life used to be. And then compare it to now. He knows what he's talking about. For someone that don't know what exactly the presence of God can make happen. Or maybe you've tried this in the kingdom and it's not working. Maybe because of inadequate revelations here and there. You can begin to think this is not true. They are lying. But go close. Read their story. I might not be there yet as an individual. But I know what his presence has made happen in my life. Oh, again and again. I know where I used to be. And I know what my life is becoming. And this, you see, you don't have to look very far. Look at my own life. Some of you have been around me for long. Let me be very humble with you tonight. I don't mean to be proud, but look at my own life. For many of you, you've been around. You saw when this thing was starting. So if my life, as the ex, don't look very far. If you look at our fathers, you might be discouraged. Because you start wondering, when will I get there? These guys, but check around. There are testimonies around you. There are testaments around you. I'm not a superman. I don't even think I'm the most intelligent. I don't think I have the oratory enough. But his presence. I've told you again and again while we started out. I knew, I knew that I had so many deficiencies. Regional, tribal, and all of this. And the only advantage I was going to have was his presence. I knew it early. For many of you, you might be like that here now. You see, this is not the teaching you come and then um, you laugh. This is a teaching to be very serious. They might look elementary, but these are the things that changes the life of people in the kingdom. The presence of God. You must have heard teachings again and again and again and you have trivialized them. But please listen and listen carefully. If you can give him your hand, and say, Lord, I know I have weaknesses. I'm not even coming because I want to be popular. Just read me off of these weaknesses and then do with me what you can do with ordinary people. You see why I like that song? 
I carry your presence everywhere. Oh, I'm mine. Your mind is so full. So you look at yourself as a mortal. You know the limitations that accompany mortality. You know the frailties that accompany mortality. But that when you are in partnership with him, when you have access to his presence, a mortal man can begin to operate upon the earth like an immortal. His presence. His presence. His presence. This is why we will always teach on this. It's one of our core values in this kingdom. I mean in this ministry. It's one of the major things we are called to preach and to demonstrate the presence of God. When you come around and see the things happening, it's supposed to happen. Because our major call is to teach the kingdom and demonstrate his presence. And if you can subscribe to the things you hear. If you can subscribe to the things we teach about his presence, there is no way you won't access him. And like a joke, you will watch your life transiting from one level to another, one dimension to another. Don't start in one month and then see no result and get discouraged. No, consistency is the key. Remain dear. Remain dear. Remain dear. Hallelujah. tonight let's start with exodus 40 i want to show you what the presence of god responds to you were not here last week you might have to get the teaching and listen to so that you can catch up the presence of god responds to something there must be a pattern let's just see a scripture exodus 40 from verse 33 And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. If you read the previous verses, the Bible will tell us he built according to pattern. He built according to the command of the Lord. So now he has, this is the seventh time the Bible is mentioning this. He is building according to pattern and he has completed the building. He has followed the laid down procedures as given to him on the mountain. Look at verse 34 now. Then a cloud covered the tent, the glory of God, of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. It was done according to pattern. In case you've tried to access his glory and his presence, and it looks like it's not working, there could be that something is missing. Look at verse 35 now. As soon as the glory of the Lord showed up, the Bible says Moses was not even able to enter into the, tam the tent of the congregation. Why? Because the cloud, the presence of the Lord had come upon the tabernacle and the glory of the Lord filled the entire place. He was not able to enter in. That a man can truly be able to access the glory of God. And literally wherever you enter, whoever you meet will not doubt it. It's like a fragrance, you can scent it. I told us last week, you literally can sense. Some of us have been able to experience that dimension of God. You can sense the presence of God. You enter your room and you know that there is, there is a scent around. It's not like you bought perfume, but you are sensing it for many of you. Say, uh -uh, who entered my room? You have to be sensitive to spiritual things. For many of you, again and again, people will look at you and say, uh, this perfume you use is very nice and you know you didn't use anything. Do you not know that the presence of God has an aura? It does. It does. It filled the tabernacle like a cloud. And the Bible said the priest could not minister. It happened again in Chronicles. The Bible said while the children of Israel, the Levite and the priest ministered to the Lord, the glory of the Lord descended. So when the pattern is followed, the glory shows up. If you have been trying to get access to his glory and it looks like this is not happening, could it be that you are defying a particular principle or you are not doing it well? Because the presence of God responds to something. Let me share three with us tonight and we trust God to wrap up next week. Because I want us to spend time to really suck in the presence of God. We're going to apply one of these principles tonight. There is a song, I truly don't know all of the song. But I hope there's somebody here that knows the song. You are my high 
living bliss. You are my with songs of deliverance. sing song like this, you literally could feel the aura of his presence walk into the house. I told you the presence of God responds to something. Let me not be faster than my shadow because this is what I want to share with you. We sing praises to your name. Oh Lord. We sing praises to your of God responds to sacrifice. Sacrifice. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Sacrifice is not just about giving money. It's an aspect of it. But any level of inconvenience you place on yourself to access him is valued and the Lord responds to it. For your glory I will do anything That's what I'm talking about. Just to see you To be results are different. Have you noticed it? We are all equal in Christ. Salvation come unto everybody. 
but that our result, the degree to which we carry and represent him on earth in his fullness are different. Certain people seem to represent God in dimension untold. While others sit and watch and they are like, my God, could this be God? And then for people that cannot even be able to relate with this, they begin to give it all kinds of names. This one is fake. This one is not true. Just because we've not been able to press, we've not been able to contend for the dimensions of God that um, we should be able to reveal to our generation. Others that are pressing now makes it look like these guys that is something about their lives that is not true. Listen carefully. These dimensions are in Christ, but that your degree of, of, of inconvenience, sacrifice, press, is what opens them up to you. Here and there, you can touch certain realities. You can touch some dimensions here and there. But that if you truly, truly want to carry him, carry his glory in his fullness, it will require that you pay certain prices. It will require that you inconvenience yourself. It will require that you do what others are not doing. Again and again, it will require that. Gather to me, the Bible says, all they that have decided to make a covenant with me by sacrifice. They have decided to separate themselves by sacrifice. Where others reach and say they are tired is where your journey begins from. Where others sit and give up, I've tried, this is not working, is where you sit and cry, but continue the journey. For many people that are even fake in this kingdom, listen, especially men of God, if you ever meet a fake man of God, most of them didn't start as fake. No, they didn't start as fake. They started well, but when they kept contending, it looked like it was not working. And maybe those they started together now were more diligent and they were having the result. They go into all kinds of things so that it doesn't look like they are fake or I mean look like they are failures rather. Listen carefully. If you can sit and truly contend, these things are yours and it has nothing to do with being a preacher. It has everything to do with being a believer. That if you are a believer, these things are for you, not for preachers. I told us last week. Separate them that have decided to make a covenant. They've decided to give up everything for this. As busy as you are, you've decided that two hours every day is for the Lord. You, you see, you are not the only busy person. If you think you are busy, and that's the reason you are not doing what you should do. There are people that are also busy, but that within their busyness, they've been able to carve out time for God. In the hour of prayer, Peter and John, where were the other apostles? In the hour of prayer, Peter, John, they would have decided to be wherever others were too. It will put pressure on you. There are things you will have to give up. There are times you want to start eating in the morning. He tells you, hold on. Not for this week. And you're like, Lord, all through the week, yes, sir. Lord, I will do whatever for you. Sacrifice. We are equal in Christ, but our sacrifice has separated us into classes. Again and again. So you can see and admire it. Impartations can even come on you. Listen, impartation is like a raw material. You use your sacrifice to activate it. You don't do anything about the, the impartation. Forget about it. It will go there and lie like a dormant grace. And you will walk around with a possibility that might never manifest. That is the part you are supposed to play. That is the part. You wake up at night while everybody is snoring. And then you spend time with God. You don't expect your result to be the same with them. If your results are the same, then God is not just. No, he's not. So every night you are awake like a witch. Others are sleeping. Then he will wake up and give all of you equal access. No, not so. Not so. And that's exactly the reason for the disparity in this kingdom. While it looks like others are really having it, it looks like others are just now the ones watching. What is happening here? If you want to carry his presence, this is it. Sacrifice. When Solomon became king, the Bible says Solomon loved the Lord. Give us that scripture, First Kings three three. And Solomon loved the Lord. Listen, if you have this first one, that's not all that there is, because a lot of us sincerely love the Lord. He has a part to play. We'll talk about it next week. But if you love the Lord, you are not supposed to stop here. 
The Bible said he even walked in the status of his father. So he kept principles. But that still was not all. Number three, the Bible said only him alone went and sacrificed to the Lord in the high places. One thousand sacrifice. So the love for God was there. He was working in integrity. But that, that was not all that there was. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Moses is in the mountain with the Lord for 40 days. The Bible did not tell us that he carried food. He went here like that. No food. He was with God for 40 days. Now he's coming down. And the Bible says he saw that these guys were now worshipping a, a, a calf or whatever. And he broke the commandment. And the Lord said, it's alright. Moses, tomorrow morning, get back to the mountain top. And when coming up tomorrow morning, please, the other stones I gave you were free of charge. This time around, ensure you find where to cut them out. Ensure when coming up, come up with two tablets. And it has to be in the morning tomorrow. So in the night, Moses had to go and start chiseling the, the mountain. And he came up the following day with two tablets of stones. And guess what? The principle that applied the first time applied again. How many days did he spend again? 40 days. God did not look and say, okay, Moses, I pity you. You have been here for 40 days. Let's just do and summarize everything and have it happen in 10 days. No. 40 days sacrifice. And the Bible said when he was done, coming down, his face was literally shining. He didn't shine the first time, not to mean the glory was not there. Listen, in this kingdom, it starts from inside. Whatever we see outside your life has a root from inside. The glory Moses reflected outside started inside, except that the 40 days was not sufficient to make it manifest. For many of us, what you have now, truly, we are not doubting what you carry. You carry it inside. You have spent 40 days with the Lord, which is good. You are, you are making progress. But that for the nations you are sent to, you need more 40 days. You need another one to add to it. You see that song now? Another measure. Holy, Holy Ghost, another, another 1,000. 1, you see it now? He measured again a thousand cubits. He said the water was to the ankle. He measured again a thousand cubits. He was to the knees. He measured again. He was to the loins. He measured again until it became a river. Arise, eat Elijah for the journey. We thank God for what we've seen yesterday. Thank God for where you are. Thank God for the results you have now. But that compared to the people waiting in your tomorrow, what you have cannot serve them. Yes. What you have now cannot serve them. I admit also that I have some result with me. But listen, compared to what the Lord has showed me, compared to where he's sending me to, what I have now cannot suffice. This is why we retreat. This is why we stay back. While people are clapping, we withdraw again and say, Lord, please, I, there, there can be more. There can be more. You sit there and cry. While others are clapping for you, man of God, you go back and cry, Lord, there can be more. You see, while you are doing that, nobody is seeing you. But when the result comes, only a fool the nice result you see you know pay the price my father told me this he said Jonathan pay the price once and for all sit down and pay it don't, don't walk around it pay it don't dance around it pay it that's the sacrifice we're talking about you have to stay for another 40 days like Moses please stay stay if the Lord is not saying run, don't run. There is no point running. I told a young man of God that was about to start ministry. I said, if the Lord is not telling you to start, don't start. Because when you eventually start, you will preach and be tired of preaching. You will preach every week, every week. There are weeks for me, I preach from Monday down to Friday, Saturday, Sunday again. Eight messages in one week. How do you do that kind of thing? You will preach until you are tired. So if God is not saying run, sit down and eat. Sit down and eat. Because when you start, you will know that this is not for child, for children. It's not child's play. Sit and eat. The journey is far. We sing that song again and again. For your glory. And many of us don't mean it. I will do anything. You are about to put food in your mouth. I say, stop. Fast three days. Say, Lord, how bad? I was just singing. It's not like I meant the song. For many of us, that's, that's what we do. 
just to see you to be holy was my king for your glory I will do anything just to see of God responds to meekness and sincerity. Not perfection. Sincerity. Sincerity. Meekness. This, this humble spirit. When you go before God, when you are in his presence, whether in the church or in your secret, there is this, 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 this level of humility, openness, sincerity. Lord, thank you for what I've seen. But I know there can be more. Unashamedly, you can carry the word of God as you open it. You are weeping on it. You are saying, Lord, there can be more. I see what you've done with our fathers. I am. I, I, I admit that I've touched something, but Lord, uh -uh. I'm not a man of God in this place. I'm a child of God. I've come to access deeper things. I've come to experience more of you. That's humility. If you go before God and go as a man of God, you are arrogant. If you go before God and you are still conscious of what he did with you yesterday, you are arrogant. You have to forget about it. Not as in being ungrateful. No, thank you. But Lord, compared to what is in you, we've not seen anything. We've not seen anything. Lord, I'm open. I'm open. Hold my hand. Lead me into deeper realities. Hold my hand. Bring me into depth. Zephaniah 3, help the person there. Zephaniah 2 3. He said, The Lord, let the, let the meek rather seek the Lord. Is that what he says? Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. So the first requirement for seeking the Lord is that you must be meek. The journey begins with meekness. It doesn't begin. If you are proud, forget about the journey. Forget about it. Forget about it. It is an exclusive reserve for the meek. If you do it and you are proud, you won't see it. He doesn't respond to it. The Bible says God resists the proud and does what? Give grace to the humble. He multiplies grace. He increases dimensions, access to the humble. That's what happened. You are humble. You are sincere. He multiplies grace. He multiplies access. So the journey starts with meekness. Let the meek of the earth not everybody on earth, the meek. Let them see. Let them come. Let them come. The Bible says, a broken and a contrite heart. Psalms 51 verse 17. The Lord will not despise. If you come like that with brokenness, the Lord will not despise. Remember the mother of John and, and James? The Bible said the mother came to Jesus requesting that her two sons sit by the left and the right. You see, it was a very... It was not a good request because the other disciples were angry and it was selfish. It was a self-centered being. But because of how she approached Jesus, he could not say no. He had to listen to her. Woman, talk to me. Help, help the person on the camera. Sorry. Don't be distracted. Please focus. Please focus. The Bible said the woman came worshiping. Don't be distracted. Please look at me. Allow them to fix it. Look at me. The woman came worshiping Jesus. Worshiping. And then the Bible said, Jesus asked a woman, people don't just do this. When you do this, there is something in your heart. What do you want? Meekness. She, she was the mother of the disciples. Meaning she, she, was, she was old enough to give birth to Jesus. But she came kneeling down and worshiping. Meekness. Meekness. This is why we worship. It's not because we have the voices. Particularly, I don't even think I have the voice. Not again. 
every time you worship, I'm going into the nest now. Every time you worship is a declaration of loyalty to this king. Loyalty to the government of this kingdom. certain things in you. Because you see, when he's turning a weakling into wonder, it will require that certain things leave your life. It will require that certain things die out of your life. It will require that a part of you truly die. So when you get to him, you have to be open enough. Lord, I don't understand. It looked like my passion for you is dying. Lord, I don't understand. It looked like the love I have for money is becoming more than the love I have for you. Lord, I don't understand what exactly is happening. It looks like I'm so distracted this period. Lord, I come before you sincerity. For with you, Lord, I can be open and not ashamed. With you, Lord, I can be open and have no fear. For I have found in you a friend that I can trust. That is why you will remain my great with the Lord, with the Lord, I can be open and not ashamed. With the Lord, with the Lord, I can be open and have no fear. For I found in you a friend that I can trust. That is why you. Consistent fellowship. Consistent fellowship. Consistent fellowship. Fellowship first with the word. Fellowship with the word. First John 1 3. For, are you projecting it? That which we have seen and which we declare unto you that he also might have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. He expects that we have fellowship and it must be consistent fellowship. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion, the fellowship, the oneness of the Holy Ghost be with us. Koinonia of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. We used to add that. The fellowship, it should be a consistent thing, a constant thing. Not something you do and give break, constant thing. And the first dimension of fellowship is in the word of God, with the word rather. Where you sit with the word and for one hour, for two hours, you are just looking for light. You see, there is a dimension of God's presence you accept through the word. Have you ever been in the place of studying the word of God and you literally can feel the presence of God? Has it happened to anybody? You see, if, it, if that's not happening to you, it means you are not sitting with the word of God. You should stay with the word and then access a dimension of his presence. Other times, light will hit you and you can't hold it again. The word of God, fellowship. This is when you allow the word enter you. Koinonia, intercourse with the word. As you read, the word becomes you. The word enters into you. The Bible says, and the word became flesh. It only becomes flesh in the place of fellowship. Not just reading it, studying it. Not just reading through. Sitting with it and allowing it enter you. The word can become flesh. The word can enter into your system. That is a dimension of fellowship that happens with the word. Not just singing. 
Not just praying. The word. Because a lot of believers have done well by praying. They have done well by worshiping. The one we've not done is the one you sit with the word. It looks like it's a reserve for those who have a message to preach. So they go to the word and look for something to preach. Meanwhile, this is supposed to be for everybody. Everybody. How about reserving one retreat and it's just to search the word of God? It's not even to pray. Many of us are used to re re I mean, retreating and that retreat is to pray. You pray for five hours, seven hours and you come out sharing the testimony which is beautiful. But listen, your prayer become more effective when it is sponsored by light. Sponsored by light. So how about staying? The prayer might just be two hours eventually, but that the light that is sponsoring it, you sat with the Lord for three hours and you access depth of the word. The light that is sponsoring the word, I mean the, the prayer now, is producing instantaneous results. If your prayers are not waiting, if your prayers, and I don't mean by the kind of tongues you speak, if they are not commanding results, it means they are not backed up by the light of God's word. You have to sit intercourse with the word. You allow the word enter you through meditation. Yes, meditation is the only major way that allows the word get into your spirit. So as you read, you don't close it and leave. As you read, you sit there and then begin to chew the word in your mind. Allow it begin to intercourse with your mind. As it happened that way, it travels from your head down to your heart. That's what happened. Meditation allowed the word of God to leave your mind, your brain down to your heart. It's at that point you see results intercourse with the word is still fellowship then number two fellowship in prayer fellowship in prayer Elohim Adonai thy kingdom come your will be done Elohim Adonai your kingdom come, your will, your will be, be done. Luke 9 28. And it came to pass about the eighth day. After this saying, he took Peter. John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. Next verse. And as he prayed, the Bible said the fashion of his countenance was altered and even his raiment was white and glistering. The presence of God. You can intercourse also in prayer. You can attract his glory also in prayer. And I don't mean just two minutes prayer, the one you pray and you are still, that is a dimension of prayer you can enter into and you forget where you are. That is, that is the kind of prayer you pray and you don't even know where you are again you are just lost in that prayer you are lost in it and you see the best time to pray those kind of prayer is at night at night where there is no distraction there is no pr I mean, pressure on you to go anywhere you are just here praying in tongues and then you travel into realms travel and come back and then you are in again real prayer changes men believe me real prayer changes people Real prayer attracts the presence of God. It does. It does. So if you want to fellowship, the first dimension is the word. Then the second is in the place of prayer. It's also fellowship. And you see, this dimension of prayer is not the time you carry prayer point and enter with. It's the one you just enter. You, you can be there for three hours. No prayer point. Somebody say, how can I be praying without prayer point? That's the prayer for the mature. Where you build yourself and you begin to enter dimensions in the spirit. So you didn't enter because lack of rent pushed you. It was not rent that brought you. It was not business that brought you. It was not the troubles around you that brought you. You just came to edify. You just came to enter into another realm with God. And you are just there, just, just, just going into the realm of the spirit. It is a dimension of prayer and it's intercourse. You do this, you are in fellowship. The other dimension you come asking the Lord is not fellowship, it's petition, it's request. There are names given to it in scripture. You are coming with scriptures, with petitions, with all the things you want. That is a prayer for, for your needs and there are names given to it. But real prayer, 
you come, no prayer point. There is no list. You just entered. You are tired of where you are. Or you, you, you just feel there are things happening in the atmosphere and you don't know what it is. You just enter. And for the next one hour, you clear the atmosphere. Shembra Sakaya. Can you take two minutes and pray? Just take two minutes. You are not thinking anything. You are just praying. Pray. You are not asking anything. You are just praying. It's fellowship with the Spirit. Fellowship. As he prayed, he was changed. When you do this kind of prayer, you see things change around you. Batalo sabradekeya. Bakatebras kibrandos kibalada braika. Sekete kebaros kibafrila bendekesh. Bless you, Predication. Bantaros ki bra frelis ka predication. Empate kos ki bate predication. Jata bakaya. Come on, one more minute, pray. Lembres ko prekin da bandos ki bra defeke. Outside and show you a part of what is happening. This is how you become strong. This is how you carry fire. This is how you carry grace. I told you it's going to be three weeks of refreshing. It's going to be three weeks of revival, three weeks of fire. Shake a break the trapos copper like a temple. Iran breast keep on those kabayalaka. Erin breast now. Now you are not supposed to leave the same. When you engage in this for a long time, you realize that your tongues are beginning to change. Has it happened to anybody? When that's not happening to you, you are traveling. It's like climbing the Jacob's ladder. You will come to a point where you can't even alter words again. You are just groaning. Something is happening. You are, you are accelerating. That's the kind of prayer that builds believers. Beloved, build yourself in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. No prayer point was given. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. No prayer point was given. Pray. All of a sudden, your spiritual sensitivity is heightened. It is also fellowship. It is. Hallelujah. The third dimension of fellowship is the one that happened in worship. So fellowship with the word, fellowship in prayer, fellowship in worship is when you come before the Lord and begin to build a habitation for him in songs. For the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. You begin to build a habitation for him. Lord, come and dwell in our worship. Come and dwell in my praise. Come and dwell. I create an atmosphere for you. I create a tabernacle for you. 
and you see when you do this one you don't have to invite him afresh just start doing it he will show up because it's a law in the realm of the spirit when that tabernacle is completed he's going to show up he's going to show up Also, ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. 16 are interest. Now he says, Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Then he says, In psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. In psalms, in hymns, 
making melody, making melody, efficient sense to the Lord. Every time you do this, His glory shows up. Every time. There are times you are in the place of prayer and you begin to receive songs. Songs begin to come. You can't remember hearing them. And it's not like God wants you to record any song. You are not even a music minister. You are only receiving them. It's a proof of a healthy secret place. Those songs keep coming. And you use them to worship. After that session, you even forget some of those songs. Some of you will carry your phone to record it. It was not for recording necessarily. It was for you to sit and enjoy the presence. Building a habitation for him. You cannot do this consistently and not attract his presence.
We adore the lion. Set up the Brianna Money. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, and Jesus drinks. How wonderful you are! You are fairer than the morning star. Just be still in his presence. Just be still wherever you are. Shalom. Just be still wherever you are. I want to pray for us now. I want to speak of our lives. Lord, tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let everyone, let everyone step into another measure of your glory. 
and from tonight for everyone let it be from glory to glory let it be from glory to glory let it be from glory to glory you are in this atmosphere let every gift upon your life be activated now you are in this atmosphere and your prayer life is down let there be revival right now your appetite for the word of god is down let it be restored right now your staying power is off let it be restored right now for many that have never even experienced the presence of god before I pray that the Holy Spirit bring you into an experience tonight. Let him bring you into an experience tonight. Let him bring you into an experience tonight. Never be the same again. Can't even hear your keyboard. We're going to do one song. And then we'll wrap up tonight. Hallelujah. You will sing to the Lord from the depths of your heart. Listen, the Lord asked me to ask you to pray for one thing you want him to do in your spiritual life. If you ask him for money, that's not it. You won't get the answer. Ask him for something around your spiritual life you trust him to do. I want to pray. This is the last thing the Lord asked me to ask you to ask for this. What do you desire? Help the young man there. Don't just pray in tongues and you didn't say anything. Ask him for what when he do, you will know he has done it. Now, inside, outside, can you lift your hands? Except if you are lying down or kneeling, just maintain your position and enjoy the presence of God. But if you are standing, lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree that whatever your children have desired of you tonight, let the experiences begin now. 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 Help them. Let the experiences begin now. 
let the revival begin now let that gift begin to manifest now let that anointing be steered up now let those ears in the spirit be open now let your eyes be open in the spirit now let the healing anointing be released on you now let the passion for the word of god be released on you now let the passion for prayer be released now let it begin now in the name of jesus 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 let the encounters begin now let the visitations begin now into the night let this night be your night let this night be your night of strange visitations of deep fellowship of deep intimacy in the name of the lord jesus carry the presence of god like never before for you will never be the same tonight you've touched his grace your life must change you will never be the same you touch his grace your life must you've done thank you for your glory thank you for your grace let no one be the same thank you thank you thank you young man touch this guy for me please come something fresh from this place. You will never be the same. Believe me. Fresh fire from the crown of your head now to the soles of your feet. Carry this grace. Go with it. Help me your mind.
you know you are here and you are not born again whether inside or outside or you are saying I want to rededicate my life to the Lord in this atmosphere wherever you are can you run and come forward just run and come 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 and just kneel down you don't have to be cajoled you know that God is in this house and you are saying tonight I want to rededicate my life or I want to give my heart to the Lord come quickly even if you are outside, run and come. Run and come. Come. I'm waiting for you. Come. God is calling on you. God is beckoning on you. Come. You are saying my ways with God have not been right. I'm making things right tonight. I refuse to take my life in my own hands. Let me hand over my life to the Lord. Come quickly. God bless you. Come. You are coming from outside. Come. You are within the hall. Come. If you are thinking of joining them, come. You are supposed to be here. Stop thinking. Come. You are thinking of joining. You are contemplating. You are supposed to be here. Come, stop thinking. Come. Come quickly before I start praying for them. Come. You are saying, Lord, today I'm surrendering my all. Come. What a beautiful atmosphere to come back home in. Can you place your hand on your chest, your heart? You're going to pray this prayer and mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, oh Lord God, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he's a son of God. And I believe he died for me. Today I confess with my mouth that he's the Lord of my life. And I receive by faith the gift of eternal life. I'm born again. I'm establishing grace. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray with your sons and daughters. I decree that the name of the Lord be named upon you. And in the name of Jesus, be planted, be established in this grace. May nothing have the capacity to drag you back. Go and love the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will keep you. Nothing will drag you back. Let the grip of your addiction sin be broken. Go and love Jesus sincerely from your heart. Fresh grace and fire to love the Lord and be established. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Be on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for making up your mind for this today. Please follow the young man there. Go with them. They are going to attend to you. Follow the young man with a red tie. Go with him. Go this way. Let them attend to you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are seated. Can you be upstanding? Still in this atmosphere, this is your first time being in family worship. You've not been here before. Can we pray for you? 
wherever you are come quickly you've not been here before let's just speak over your life and bless you thank you for joining us thank you for coming no, you don't have to kneel. You don't have to kneel. You don't have to kneel. Thank you for coming. Come closer. Come closer. Thank you for joining us. You are coming from outside. Come quickly. Come quickly. Join us. He's a cry for your glory. Keep coming. You are coming from outside. Let's wait for you. Double up your steps. Sunday evening and it will be our joy to keep having you. Meanwhile, we ask you to come out so that you can make contact with this altar. Whatever it is you desire of the Lord, I want you to release your faith because I'm about to pray with you now. And let's trust God for turnaround. If there is anything particularly you are trusting the Lord for, I want to release my faith. The Bible says one chairs a thousand, two chairs ten thousand. We are better when we pray together. Can I speak over your lives now? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your sons and daughters. You brought them here by your mighty hand. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that first, let grace be multiplied over your lives. Whatever has been a struggle over time, whether spiritually, financially, career-wise, in the name of Jesus, the grace for ease come on you now. The grace for ease come on you now. Whatever had made you cry, we convert it to a testimony. It will not help her, help her, help her. It will no longer be a cause for crying. We convert it to a testimony. For those of you who are truly hungry for the presence of God, carry it now. Such as we have, such as I have, I give you, carry it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I decree that your lives are preserved. Go and begin to love the Lord with passion experiences glory like never before no man born of a woman can take your life everything god have committed to your hand from now let it begin to prosper your hands will produce superior results and you are no longer the same again in jesus mighty name amen and amen we love you and hope to see you again next week and in case you don't stay around here you can follow us online for our life services. God bless you richly. Please, our officers are outside to give you a warm welcome. Thank you for joining us. They're going to take this way. Some of you can also take that way and they will direct you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. You are hungry for his glory. atmosphere go home with you this is not one of those services that you go and leave everything back in the name of Jesus may this same atmosphere follow you into your house follow you into your room follow you into your car follow you into your office follow you into your class in the name of the Lord Jesus it is done allow her let God get done with her just drop her just drop her and I pray that this week, again, the presence of God will bring to you what your strength could not bring. The presence of God will make happen in your life what you could not make happen for yourself. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. We will trust God to wrap up the series next week. And listen, invite someone. Let's have a time in God's presence. And for all the workers, tomorrow we meet by 5 p.m. And the Lord do you good in Jesus' name. Those who are here to redeem their sacrifices, is still open. Please go ahead and do so. And the Lord will honor you in Jesus' name. Are you blessed tonight? Lift your hands. Bless the name of the Lord. Inside, outside, lift your hands. Give him praise. You are following online. We appreciate you. And the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Finally, before we say the grace, there is a wedding coming up again on the 4th of September. Amen. Are you happy about that? All right. This is, this is the invite now. Thank you. Media, you tried today without putting the pictures. Thank you. It's happening again here, family worship experience um, between Miss Sunday Priscilla and Mr. Agbaja. Did I ask you to put the picture? Why are you guys like this? Remove the picture. It's not for today. Some of you cannot even media. Why are you like this? All right. Um, please. It's like this season truly is our season of laughter, right? It's our season of Isaac. Because Isaac last month, Isaac again next month. So maybe the next person that is going to get wedded in this place will have to be Isaac. You are not Isaac. We'll send you to these two Isaacs to baptize you. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Indeed, it's our season of laughter. If you are trusting God to have your own this year, it's not too late. Let resources come. Let resources come. And if the person is not there, let the person come. And when you see the person, for the brothers, the grace to talk. The grace to talk. For the ladies, the grace to accept. In Jesus' name. Amen. So please, next week, or when is a week to time, I don't know when exactly it's going to be a week to time, we'll present them to you. And then you also see the pictures. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. All right, can we say the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. Amen. Did I say it twice? I love you. God bless you. Telegram page, Family Worship Experience International.